hear that? You have to listen. Because listening, guys, is one of the key things you're going to need when you learn a language. Listening is about 60% of all communication. And when we're learning a language, it's also one of the hardest things to learn. So guys, today we're going to look at some studies, we're going to review some studies, and we're going to give you some tips and advice on how we can help our students listen and learn. We'll see you at the end of the video, as always, for a little bit of a summary. Enjoy! So today, guys, it's all about listening. Now, listening makes up about 60% of all communication and is one of the key ways we learn new things. The problem is that listening is often cited as the most troublesome factor when it comes to learning a language. It is also one of the most overlooked by teachers in terms of how we can help our students become better listeners. Today I've brought in my friend and research assistant, Tisha Yoon, to discuss the art of listening for language learning. Now, for those unfamiliar with Tisha, Tisha was born and raised in Seoul, South Korea and graduated with a degree in linguistics from Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. She is fluent in English and her mother tongue is Korean. Actually, when I first met Tisha while she was doing a work holiday visa in Australia, I actually thought she was American. Now, thanks for joining us, Tisha. Hi guys, I'm Tisha. So today we are looking at the art of listening, but before we get into that, can you tell me, how long have you studied English? Um, since I was 13, so about 15 years now. Okay. And when did you start to feel like you were becoming fluent? After 10 years of studying, I went to one of the top universities in Korea when it comes to language studies. I studied there where I had to communicate in English in almost every class, and that's when I came to realize I'm pretty much fluent. Okay, well, I haven't been studying Korean for that long, and that may be one of the reasons why I don't feel fluent in Korean yet. <laughs> so, as I said, today we're looking at listening. How important do you think listening is as a skill or as an exercise to help someone learn a language? I think it is the key for communication. Most of my English study has been heavily focused on listening. And of course, I studied Sunung English by memorizing tons of words as well. Okay, so before you go on, for those who don't know, Sunung English is like the killer English exam which students need to take in Korea to get into university. Is that correct, Tisha? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've looked at some of those questions and I will be honest, I made a few mistakes. The grammar is pretty hard. <laughs> well, anyway, um, yeah, I studied Sunung English as well, but um, my intonation and accent and natural speed and flow, I think all these things uh, come from what I've watched and listened to. Um, and I'm not saying reading or vocabulary are less important, but if you want to go out and communicate with foreigners, listening is the key. Yeah, and I think that is a very important thing to remember that, of course, a lot of uh, teachers will say that speaking is the key, and, and speaking is very important. I've asked a lot of my students, what's the most important thing for you when learning? And they say speaking. But speaking is really reliant on listening. You need to know what the question is. You need to know what the topic is. If you're not listening correctly or actively, then it's very hard to engage as a speaker. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so moving on then, um, you said you, that listening is important, but how much listening did you actually do? Uh, I used to watch a lot of American TV, so um, I remember back in high school years, I was crazy about American sitcom Friends. Everyone was crazy about Friends. <laughs> and um, there are 10 seasons, and I've finished them within a year. I loved it. And I guess uh, I did about one or two hours of listening every day. Wow. Okay. And when you were a beginner and you were doing this listening, so a lot of this I'm guessing would be passive listening, just listening and watching for enjoyment? 
Yeah. Okay. And how did you feel that you didn't necessarily understand everything? Uh, I didn't understand everything, but it was okay. I just kept watching it. Okay, so what would your advice be? Or can you give teachers or students some tips about listening? Because I do that. I, I'm watching, and I've said it before, I'm watching a TV show in Korea called Pororo. Uh, he's Pororo. Very, Pororo. He's very cute, but I've actually graduated to Tayobas. Tayobas. I've yes. never watched it. Oh, it's great. It's a little bit more advanced. Um, and I find that just trying to follow the story helps me learn new words and new structures. But I'm interested to hear about you. You've reached a, f a level of fluency which I'm yet to reach, so I'd like to learn from you. Give me some, give me some tips. Um, I think captions or scripts can help, uh, but make sure you can hear and understand the new words without them. Okay, so when you say captions, you're talking, if you're learning French, you use French. You're learning Korean, you use Korean. Yeah. You're not talking subtitles where if I'm watching Korean, I'm using English. Yeah. Okay, so it's captions, guys. Okay, and keep on going. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Um, and you can also read the lines out loud from the script. And some of the lines can be short or maybe too long and difficult for you, but that doesn't really matter. I think it's a good tip. Uh, yeah. So um, just imitate your favorite actor and have fun and... You'll learn how to speak and the words you didn't know. You'll pick them up next time you hear them. I'm sure of it because that's exactly how I've done it. Well, Tisha, I think that's some great advice. I've spoke to many people who have become functionally fluent in a second language, and they've said the same thing. Just watch and engage and use captions, but then turn them off so you can really see if what you think you know, you can actually hear. I'm at the stage where when I'm reading the captions, I can hear perfectly, but when I turn them off, I'm still not quite getting it. But as Tisha said, he did hours of listening. And remember the rules, frequency, intensity, time, and type. So she's getting the frequency every day. She's doing the time, doing a lot of time, which was great. And I think this is where students I think they give up quite easily. They think, oh, I don't understand the first time or second time. It does take hours. Uh, Tisha, what, do you have any extra little tips you would give our teachers or our students to really facilitate learning listening skills? Because when people say you just have to listen, there are skills to listening. Do you have any tips for our listeners? Um, well, first of all, uh, when you are a beginner, if you don't understand everything, it's fine. Just keep watching it and um, you'll get there. And when you get to the level where you can choose the topics, then start with what you like. Then um, as you already have a certain amount of knowledge, it'll be easier and you'll pay attention. Oh, Tisha, I think that's an amazing tip. I think if you can as a teacher, get your students involved with choosing their listening homework or uh, actually any part of the class will help increase motivation and will help students study. They will, they will do the time because they're enjoying it. Yeah. Um, and what about you? What are your tips? Well, I've got a few little tips here which I'd like to share with teachers to help our students improve. So listening, a lot of teachers, we just tell our students, oh, just listen. Now, passive listening, which we will look at when we look at language learning versus language acquisition, there's a huge place for passive listening, which Tisha did when she was just watching friends over and over. That's great. But as a teacher, we want to expedite the learning process. So, I implore you to teach your students listening skills. By this, I mean, maybe have a focus for each time the student listens to a given assignment or a given listening clip. For example, the first time, you might be listening for gist. Just, what do you think it's about? Then, you might listen 
to pick up some intonation. Or if you're more advanced, maybe you're trying to listen to hear the joke. Was the joke wordplay or was it a cultural reference? So what are we actually listening for? Set some parameters for your students. For beginners, it might just be to listen to how the words are broken up. Can you hear individual words? It's up to you. Be creative with this. My second tip is one which Tisha has already mentioned. Choose a listening file or a clip which is interesting to the student. There's so many things out there. It could be something funny, it could be something on animals, it could be something on business. Whatever your student is interested in, find something and then just manipulate those parameters, frequency, intensity, time, and type to suit the student. And finally, which it's not really a tip, it's just, I guess, common sense, get your students to listen a lot. So I think that pretty much covers my tips, Tisha. Do you have any final words before I wrap up? Music. Music. Yes, that is a word before we wrap up. What do you mean by music, Tisha? Uh, choose your favorite song and um, listen to the song, listen to the rhythm and lyrics, and you will learn culture, metaphor, many things. Yeah, I, th I think it's a great idea. There's some wonderful research coming out of Edinburgh University in Scotland about the use of singing when you're trying to learn a language. So, guys, the tips are, with this, listen a lot, be active in your listening, don't worry if you don't understand everything, because with the frequency and context clues, you'll pick things up, use music, use things which your students are going to enjoy. Teachers, really explain this to your students so they can understand that if they're not understanding everything, that's just the way that we learn. And eventually, if you just keep on keeping on, you will get there. Guys, Tisha and I are going to leave you now, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, sorry. I was just listening to some Korean. Guys, remember, it's all about listening. Listen, listen, listen. Sometimes when I listen to Korean, most of the time at the moment, I'm a beginner, I don't understand. But as the research says, just listen. Encourage your students to listen. Make it enjoyable for them. And also, remember, frequency, intensity, time, and type. Get it to their level. I watch cartoons. I'm a beginner. If you're a bit more advanced, watch something more advanced. But remember, you can manipulate that any way you want. I'm going to listen to some more Korean. You guys have a great day and remember, keep English real.